Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship this morning. We are glad that you are here to worship God together. We're glad that some of you are watching online later today and, um, and hope that you find meaning in that. This is our Commitment Sunday. We'll say more about that later in the service. We also welcome Carpe Deum. We're glad that you are here this day. And um, I think you will enjoy hearing their music. This afternoon at 345, we encourage you to come with a decorated trunk if you'd like to decorate it, or come just to see the parade of, of Halloween trunk or treaters that are here. Following that, it will be all socially distanced. Following that, we will have a concert by Tim Barrage, Jared, and Emily, Emily Campbell. So we will be glad to have you here for that event as well. It is a little chilly out today, so I think in cars will, will be a good um, alternative. And now may we worship God together.
The scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 22. I invite you to hear these words. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of God from a long, long, long time ago for us, the people of God here and now today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Matthew and Danny and hi to all the children that are watching online later this day. We have something we want you all to see, children of all ages. Um, I've told you before that on Thursdays, late in the afternoon, Gretchen Wessel has been working with our children, socially distanced ways with very small groups out here on the porch for ringing bells and learning some songs. While she is working with some of the children. Ashley is working with some other children. They have about six groups of children, actually, that rotate through. And um, the children that Ashley has been working with have made for you um, a, a poster kind of thing out of wood. And you'll see it over there on the chair on the other side of the pulpit. And each child was allowed to go up and add something to it, then go back to their seat. The next child went up. And this is their example of connectedness. So um, we hope you can see it. And um, if later you need to stand at the back for a moment and look, that's fine too. It will also be on Facebook and online on the website. But it's the children's gift to us about how they see connectedness very beautiful way we do have this day carpet day I'm with us and I'm just wondering I know I'm not going to call you to come up or anything like that but can you just maybe shout out what state you're from I'm, I'm fascinated by how you've come together here so if you could start over at the far end and Washington State Texas Texas. Washington State. Washington State. Colorado. Colorado. You had a fifth person last night, didn't you? Okay. And where were they from? Florida. Florida. So they come from all over and they come together and um, we're going to be one of their homes across the country. And we are so glad for that and glad for your presence with us. In future times when we're able to do more in person, they'll even be working with the children um, in an afternoon session. So we're really glad you're with us. We have bags of blessing today. And I could make John go back there and ask him very nicely to hold things up for us to see what's in there. But you don't need to. We can see there's a lot of pull-ups. There are a lot of pull-ups. So these are things for the Y Family Center. And um, boys, Matthew and Daniel, do you remember wearing pull-ups? Yeah, mom remembers. Okay. Pull-ups are very important for little children. And we're so glad that you brought pull-ups and other things in as well. So let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you 
for Danny and Matthew and for all the children of this congregation and indeed of this community and world. We thank you for all these items that have been brought for the Y Family Services and look forward to hoping that the children and families who receive them will feel just a little bit of love. Amen. In that same spirit of feeling a little bit of love, I invite you uh, to join me now in this time of prayer, a time where we remember or recognize that whether we voice our prayer concerns aloud or hold them silently in our hearts and our minds, that we are loved by God nonetheless, and that God hears and receives all of our prayers, whether they are verbal or silent. Would you join me in prayer? O Holy One, come into the safe and protected corners of our hearts and minds this day and help us to release our grip on all the things we've exhausted ourselves trying to carry, our resentments, our anxiety, our anger, our doubts, or our confusion of heart or mind or spirit. Help us to pray with confidence and help us move beyond where we are to what we might become by caring for our neighbor. Help us to take our sorrows and the taste of bitter betrayals and let those go, bit by bit, so that we don't become sorrowful or creatures of revenge. Help us instead to weave the losses of our lives into something beautiful, made possible only by caring for others where good things have taken place this past week but have been glossed over in an effort to find something negative to complain about. Stir us to find another way. Where your presence among us has been near palpable, but we've turned our hearts or our heads to focus elsewhere, move us to look for your presence before we open our mouths where our neighbor has said or done something that reflects something of you to us, but we've just been too busy to notice, slow us down just a little bit so that we might see something holy in the stranger called our neighbor. And then where we're so focused on loving you in all of the right ways that we forget the best way to love you, is to treat strangers with the same love we'd like them to treat us. Help us be better at seeing something of you in them. In this heightened political season, O oh God, where some are excited to see the next ad campaign, commercial debate, or argument, and others cringe at the near mention, help us to see one another first as God's beloved, every one of us rather than seeing each other as voting allies or adversaries. Where we are certain our values and ideas are best suited by our own outlooks, open our minds to consider someone else's prerogative too. And where it's just easier to turn our gaze away from those who are so different from us that we're uncomfortable, remind us again of your words, you shall love your neighbor, as yourself. So all of this, O oh God, we ask in the name of the one who came us to show us, who came to show us what that looks like, what it sounds like, and what it feels like on both sides. The one who is love personified, Jesus the Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Just a reminder that we will sit in the sanctuary through the postlude and then I will do the sending forth and the ushers will dismiss you by row from the back of the sanctuary. Numbers in Ohio are going up for the COVID and so we are asking you please to um, follow the various things we have put into place here. They're done so that we can remain the safest as possible. Please pray with me. Amen. In December of 2010, Ladin Lashari penned an article that was entitled, What Does Love Mean? See how four to eight year old children describe love. I saw some parts of this um, making its rounds again this week on Facebook. It comes up every once in a while, so I decided to look it all up again. A group of professionals ask a group of four to eight year olds, what does love mean? Here's some of their answers. See if you can relate. Rebecca said, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love. Billy says, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know that your name is safe in their mouth. Terry said, love is what makes you smile even when you're tired. Danny said, love is when my mommy makes coffee for my daddy and she takes a sip before giving it to him to make sure the taste is good. Bobby said, love is what's in the room with you at Christmas if you stop opening presents and listen. Nika said, if you want to learn to love better, you should start with a friend who you hate. Marianne said, love is when your puppy licks your face even after you left him alone all day. Author and lecturer Leo Bucks. Bascalia once talked about a contest he was asked to judge. The purpose of the contest was to find the most caring child. The winner was a four-year-old child whose next-door neighbor was an elderly gentleman whose wife had recently died. Upon seeing the man cry, the little boy went into the old gentleman's yard, climbed onto his lap, and just sat there. When his mother asked what he had said to the neighbor, the little boy said, nothing. I just helped him cry. The religious leaders were continuing to try to trip Jesus up. Jesus silenced one group, so a lawyer from another religious group asked him the next question. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus answered by taking two laws and lifting up both. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. The greatest. And this one like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And then Jesus asked them a question, and they bantered a bit, and no one could really answer. And from that day on, they did not dare ask him any more questions. Tris Stefasnik of Overlook Retreat House of Spring reflects on this text. Those listening would have been familiar with both of these commandments and their scriptures, but in different books. What Jesus does here is to link them and make the two inseparable. We cannot truly love God and at the same time not love our neighbor. By loving, we come to realize ourselves as a participant in the great love and see everyone and everything apart. 
Now, I'm not sure when I came to this knowing, she says. My guess is that it had something to do with how I felt when someone loved me for who I was and not who they wanted me to be. Or when I truly listened to another. Or when I reached beyond comfort or fear into another's world to see with their eyes. Perhaps it was when I thought I could love no more, but something in me did. Or when I see or experience how out of situations of pain and suffering, compassion is so often born, an inconceivable generosity and kindness extended. Today on this Commitment Sunday, when we're doing some family business, we celebrate these two commandments related to love. This year our Commitment Sunday has slid even more into a commitment season than normal. And many of you have already sent in your sheets indicating how you want to connect throughout the next year and your estimate of giving. Thank you for that. Thank you to those of you who will. It's different this year. Facing a pandemic that attempts in many ways to disconnect us, we are celebrating our connection to God and our connection to one another and others. As you fill out the sheet, or have filled it out, you are indicating ways that you celebrate love of God and one another, and the recognition that they are tied together in inseparable ways. Think about how your life is defined by love. Have you ever been changed by another person's love? Who's the neighbor in need of your love? Our world right now seems not only disconnected, but in turmoil and division. We in the church know about disagreements and division. The church has divided and come back together a number of times, and often our division has been over things that later we wonder, how could that have been so dividing? I heard this week of something I confess I have never heard of before. In one of his writings, Marcus Borg shared a story about a schism. A schism which occurred in the late 1800s in North Carolina, shortly after the Civil War. A small town businessman from a remote community in the mountains of North Carolina went to one of the larger cities, perhaps Raleigh. And there, for the first time in his life, he saw an ice-making machine. Now, machines that could make artificial ice were a recent invention. He thought this was a wonderful because it meant you could have ice all summer long. So he returned to his small community in the mountains of North Carolina, told his church about this great new invention. Within a month, the church had split into ice and no ice members. The theological issue in this case being, is it a violation of the natural order established by God to make ice out of season? If God had wanted us to have ice in the summertime, God surely would have raised the freezing temperature of water, seems to have been the argument. Borg goes on to point out that while we spend much time on what we believe and disagreeing on our beliefs, being Christian has so much more to do with love than belief. And if we love as God loves, then we believe in transformation of our own lives, our neighbors, and the world. As United Methodists, we seek to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And it starts with these two commands that Jesus gave long ago. Person by person, 
Connect through prayer, through services, through gifts, through presence, virtual or in person, and through witness. In fact, if you are joining in our study of the book Holy Chaos, which begins today, you will see the author shows that all the major religions of the world uplift this concept of Jesus, of love of God, or that beyond oneself. Love of neighbor and love of self. Opportunities abound here and beyond for witness. It happens in a lot of different ways. We have some yard signs that say, love your neighbor. Now this is the season for yard signs. And we have these love your neighbor yard signs that you can pick up, pick up on your way out today if you would like. Um, you can donate $10 if you like, or you can just take one. We're joining with congregations, particularly United Methodist ones, across this country for this Love Your Neighbor campaign. It's a good reminder from our text this day that any time, but at this particular time, may we remember Jesus' words. In our words, our actions, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> if you have yet to pick up or fill out a commitment form this day, you can do so. There are some at the back on the table where the communion elements have been. Have been. You can pick one up and bring it back later or mail it. <laughs> And if you want to take it out and come back in the, the doors by the office, that's fine too. Excuse me, I have a little tickle. <coughs> Please pray with me. And then I invite you to read the words of our last hymn as you listen to the postlude. <clears throat> we offer our gifts to you, O oh God. Strengthen our prayers, our presence, our service, our gifts, and our witness in the world that we become instruments of your love. Bless that which we offer. May it, through your great love, make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In our disconnectedness, help us realize our connection to you, to each other and to others around the community and the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
Thank you again for being with us. And may we all leave this place today and remember to love God with our heart, our mind, and our soul. And love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen.